Welcome back to the new features video series for Cubase 8. I'm your host, Walt Honeycutt. As a professional instructor, I understand that learning your way around new functionality can be challenging. But hang in there, because the new capabilities make this one of the most exciting releases in a long time. These videos are aimed primarily at helping you transition from previous versions of Cubase by providing a guided tour of the new features. One of the most dramatic changes in Cubase is the new Mix Console. So let's jump in and tackle it first. The Mix Console looks completely different compared to the previous Project Mixer. But once you learn your way around the interface, you'll find that Mix Console is much faster and much easier to work with. Let's start with something familiar and use the Window Layout tool to open all of the panes. Now this shows a total of eight panes, but there's actually a lot more here. Let's go ahead and use the new full screen mode so that we can take a good look around. Steinberg redesigned the mixer for a very simple reason, to make it faster and easier to use. And they accomplished this by introducing the single window concept. The single window concept means bringing as many functions as possible out of the menus and making them available in the primary workspace. Now something we've already noticed in our studio is that the mix console has replaced the project window as the preferred screen, and here's why. You can think of the Mix Console in four basic areas. At the top are all sorts of universal controls. The center area, called the rack, can be configured to show a variety of information, and we'll look at this in Chapter 2. Then there are two sets of nested tabs flanking the Mix Console. On the left, you have one tab for track visibility, and another tab, the Zone tab, to control track position. On the right, you have a tab for the Control Room, which has two tabs of its own at the bottom, and a meter tab, which also has two more tabs at the bottom. This is why I said there's a lot more than just eight panes here. For the rest of this chapter, we'll look at how to work with and configure the Mix Console. Then in the next chapter, we'll discuss its processing power and signal handling. First, the Mix Console is fully scalable. You can grab the sizing handle in the corner and drag to the size you want, and all the panes inside will automatically adjust. You can restore the full screen view with the frame controls. You can click and drag the edges of any pane to adjust its size. The projects in our studio seem to get bigger and more complicated every year. And there's no way you can fit a large project onto a single monitor, or for that matter, even fit it onto two or three screens, especially if you have multiple takes, multiple automation lanes for every channel, and so on. But Mix Console has all sorts of tools to solve this problem. First is the Visibility tab. Use the radio buttons to control each track's visibility on and off. And you can hold down the Shift key and click to turn everything else off. Now to turn all these back on, let's look at the next tool, the Channel Visibility Agents. Visibility agents are just rules about what to show or hide. And one of my favorites is the option to show channels connected to the first channel selected. This will clear away everything except the channel you're working on and anything that interacts with it. And notice that you have undo and redo capability for the visibility changes. Right next to the agents menu is another powerful visibility tool. This lets you control which types of channel to display or hide. So for example, during a mix down, you might want to hide the input channel or if you're overdubbing a voice part, you might find it convenient to hide the instrument channels. You also have the Zones tab at your disposal. You can click the circles to bring the track in question to one end of the mixer or the other. And notice that when I select a track in the Zones tab, it's also selected in the other areas of Mix Console as well. This is really helpful when you have the Mix Console expanded across two monitors. You can bring a channel to you without a lot of scrolling. Finally, you have a search function built into Mix Console. And as soon as you begin to type, Mix Console begins to generate results. And again, when you select the desired channel in the search results, it's selected everywhere in Mix Console. So a very quick way to work would be to search for the channel you want, then use the Agents menu to hide everything else. In the top center are universal controls for muting, solo, and listen. You can also suspend read, write, or all automation. And you can bypass all the inserts, EQ, channel strip, which we'll get to shortly, and send effects. 
Cubase makes it incredibly easy to use channel linking. First, select a group of channels to link. Then click on the Q-Link button to temporarily link those channels. Now, any parameter you move on one channel affects the entire group. It is as easy as select, Q-Link, and adjust. But there's a lot more here. You can also use the Link button to create a more permanent connection. Use this dialog to select which controls you want to link and click OK. Now all of the linked controls respond together and keep their relative positions. But what if you want to adjust one parameter in the linked group? Easy. Click the SUS button to temporarily suspend linking. Make the adjustments you need and then click SUS again to restore link and return to adjusting the channels as a group. But what if you don't want to use their relative values? What if you want to set the whole group to a common value? That's just as easy. Click on the ABS button, which stands for Absolute Mode. Now all of the linked channels will snap to the value that you set. This is the Functions menu. Here you can copy channel settings, change the channel width and track height, access things like the global meter settings. And finally, if you right click on the toolbar's background, you can configure exactly what Cubase displays. Okay, now that you know your way around the Mix Console, let's move on to the next chapter and we'll take a look at what the Mix Console can do for your audio.